everyone. My name is Christine Bays. I hold a Canada Research Chair in Livestock Genomics, and I am an Associate Professor in the Department of Animal Biosciences at the University of Guelph. I am very pleased to present to you some of the work we've done together with hybrid turkeys within an Ontario genomics funded project focusing on applying genomic selection to turkeys for health, welfare, efficiency, and production traits. Dr. Ben Wood of Hybrid Turkeys served as the industry lead of this multidisciplinary project, which started in 2017 and will finish in December of this year. With a total value of $6 million, the project will provide novel methods and phenotypes for genomic selection of turkeys. Today, I will present some of the very exciting studies done by our team in the context of this project. My presentation covers both theoretical and applied aspects of our research. Our project has a large and interdisciplinary team with expertise in genetics, veterinary science, meat science, and animal behavior. There are a number, a number of postdoctoral fellows, graduate students, and collaborators also involved in our research, two of whom will be presenting their work later today. Don't miss presentations by Dr. Ninke van Stavren and PhD candidate Emily Leishman, who will be providing more details on their respective research areas later this morning. I will start my presentation by addressing some of the theoretical aspects of the genomic analyses that we have done. Genomic information allows much more in-depth analysis of relatedness within the population. Work initiated by Dr. Gabriela Maras and continued by Dr. Biode Macagnola and MSc student Sarah Adams shows that genomic inbreeding levels are higher than pedigree inbreeding levels, and the genomic data we have available showed that genomic inbreeding levels are not equal across the genome. This is an important finding as it allows us to identify signatures of selection which affect various traits in different ways. The graphic on the right-hand side of your screen shows the inbreeding coefficients analyzed through different methods. The first three lines um, show pedigree inbreeding values, and you can see that inbreeding values estimated with genomic information, either through runs of homozygosity or through a genomic relationship matrix, are considerably higher than those estimated with pedigree information alone. Taking this work one step further, Dr. Imhimad Abdallah identified underrepresented genotypes in our large data set using a transmission ratio distortion approach. This new approach is helping us understand embryo mortality and other survival traits important to the industry, which may not be identified as genetic in nature. Through incorporating genomic evaluations in turkey selection programs, we can estimate heritabilities of important production traits much more accurately. This work, done by Dr. Imhimad Abdallah, shows how the implementation of single-step genomic evaluations into routine selection programs will boost the accuracy of breeding programs. His analysis focused on production traits, such as feed conversion ratio, residual feed intake, body weight, breast meat yield, and walking score, but can also be applied to other health, welfare, and quality traits as well. Dr. Hakima Mmgoli Begli and Dr. Biode Macagnola studied the application of random regression models to longitudinal traits like egg production. Using statistical approaches more common in dairy cattle genomic selection, we can now more accurately model how the genetics of the bird affects egg number over the course of lay. This provides a selection tool which will improve long-term production traits while providing insight to the genes underlying these important biological processes. By splitting the lay into different months or sections, Hakima identified six different areas where different genes were activated in the turkeys. 
comparing that to the total egg production, we can see that there are different genes um, affecting egg numbers, for example, in the first month of lay compared to those in the fourth month of lay. Dr. Imhimad Abdallah looked at structural equation models. These models are used to understand not only correlations between traits, but also causation. Gaining insight into correlations and causation between routinely collected traits like feed conversion ratio, residual feed intake, body weight, breast meat yield, and walking score help uncover the genetic architecture of these traits and provide important information on how to include weight and implement these traits in breeding programs. Now on to some applied aspects we're studying. Here the focus is on developing novel phenotypes and traits which will help select for balanced birds. Dr. Hakima Mmgoli Begli and Dr. Bayode Makanyola studied reproduction traits with a focus on animal behavior, such as broodiness and pause length. By incorporating these traits into the breeding goal, we can select for birds that are more suited to today's production systems. Dr. Ninke van Stavren and PhD candidate Emily Leishman conducted a Canada-wide survey for turkey farmers benchmarking housing and management of turkey flocks, farmers' perceptions about health and welfare traits, and a number of other housing-related issues currently affecting our industry. Emily will also be presenting results from this survey on factors associated with footpad dermatitis prevalence immediately following this presentation. After that, Dr. Van Stavren will be presenting some of her results on farmers' perceptions about health and welfare issues, so be sure to catch their presentations. PhD candidate Emily Leishman is also developing a novel trait for application to breeding programs, which will help understand the biological background of corticosterone in different selection lines of turkeys. By quantifying corticosterone in feathers, we are hoping to develop a selection tool for animals that experience less stress in commercial housing systems. Emily has already observed differences in the amount of corticosterone between lines housed in identical conditions, indicating that these differences could be genetic in nature. Pendulous crop is another problem affecting the health and welfare of turkeys. Dr. Imhimad Abdallah studied the genetic and phenotypic variants of this trait in Canadian birds and found that 16 to 17 percent of the variation in this trait is genetic in nature. Incorporation of this trait into routine breeding value estimation can provide a tool for reducing the prevalence of pendulous crop thus improving the health and welfare of commercial turkeys. Within our project, we are also collecting data on meat quality, meat production, traits. Michelle Yehiro, Heather Hiscock, and Riley Vanderhout, along with a larger team of summer students, made over 100 trips from Guelph to Dashwood, driving a total of about 13,000 kilometers and spending a lot of money on speeding tickets and Tim Hortons over the course of a year and a half to collect samples and take various measurements on hybrid birds. The information gathered will not only improve genetic evaluations, but will also be used to develop novel methods for analyzing carcass images. And you can see in the bottom left-hand corner of this screen, we have our abattoir setup where images are being taken of carcasses passing by in order to collect information on additional phenotypes of whole body and meat yields, which will be automated um, in hopefully the near future. Each study I have briefly described is impressive in its own right. However, the integration of these analyses and results provides the real value of this project. We have done extensive analyses and development of statistical methods incorporating genomic data. These studies, including analyses of relatedness, genomic evaluations, models, and transmission ratio distortion, provide the framework for implementing novel phenotypes. 
These phenotypes are being collected on reproduction, efficiency, health and welfare, and production traits. The development of these phenotypes requires careful collection and analysis of different tissues and material, all which bring us closer to understanding the biology of commercial turkeys. The understanding and use of correlations between production, health, welfare, and efficiency traits will improve the balanced and sustainable breeding goals set by hybrid, and the statistical methods applied provide novel insights into the genetic architecture of turkeys. Ultimately, the results of this project will be implemented in the commercial breeding program run by hybrid turkeys and will help to improve estimates of genetic gain, new phenotypic measures, better control of deleterious alleles, and will result in larger breeding program changes. We are grateful to Hendrix Genetics, Hybrid Turkeys, Ontario Genomics, and Genome Canada for financial support of this project. And finally, none of this would have been possible without the incredibly dedicated team of students and postdoctoral fellows involved in the project, whom we are so proud of. With that, I'd like to thank you for your attention. And if anyone has any questions, please either speak up or send them to us in the chat. Thank you so much. Oh, you're muted, Victoria. I knew that was going to happen. Thank you, Dr. Bates. <laughs> that was an excellent overview. And it was interesting to hear about what all the members of your team are doing. So there seems to be a, a large body of work that's going on with turkeys. And so I should mention as well that this session is sponsored by Turkey Farmers of Canada. And we know that turkeys are uh, relatively under-researched species. So it is excellent to see this work being done. Um, just a reminder to everyone that if you have a question, please type them in the Q&A box and I will be reading those and providing them to Dr. Bates. And just a reminder that we will be having uh, the talks from some of the folks mentioned in the presentation as well subsequent to this. Um, as we wait for some questions to come in, uh, perhaps Dr. Bates, I could pose one to you. Um, with respect to genomic selection, um, and I was interested in uh, the work that you mentioned on carcass composition, um, but do you see this um, being your work replacing maybe more traditional methods of um, carcass uh, composition and assessment, I should say, uh, going forward in the future? Yeah, I, I think the work that we've done and we're trying to do is uh, is really promising. We're the, the students um, who are involved in this project and who are around right now in this era of, of uh, novel technologies are really lucky to be a part of, um, of this new era because it's, it's going to allow us to have much more accurate information be being collected in an automated way. Um, implementing these things is still quite difficult. We still need a lot of um, knowledge and uh, experience uh, to, to set up these, these new pipelines. However, I do believe that there is a lot more that we can do and that we should be con constantly striving to do, to do better. Um, I've worked in the swine industry as well a little bit and, and in Europe and North America, and it seems that there are just a, a huge number of opportunities that, that we could be implementing here in, in Canada as well. And we should be striving to, um, to constantly do better. Thank you for that.